Hello there, my name is Hany Gui and this is your 5pm English news on TVS. Let's dive into the news. A move towards a smarter and safer Kuching city, the Ministry of Local Government and Housing, in collaboration with Sarawak Multimedia Board, SMA, has installed more than 800 closed-circuit television, CCTV cameras in 200 locations around Kuching and Samarahan. SMA is working with the uh, four, four uh, lo Ministry of Local Government in Kuching. There are four councils involved, uh, in, in which we will, we will have uh, more than 800 cameras and at uh, 200 sites. Yeah? And this today here is one of the sites. In line with the digital economy agenda developed by the Chief Minister of Sarawak, Datuk Patinggi Abang Johari Tun Openg, this step is one of the efforts to plan economic growth through the smart city concept. One of the reasons why we're doing that is because uh, CM Abanjo was talking about digital uh, economy, digital uh, and so on, smart city, and local government needs to to work together with, with the uh, South government so that we can have an integrated, integrated uh, smart city. The CCTV cameras were installed in areas under the South Kuching City Council, North Kuching City Council, Padawan Municipal Council and Samarahan City Municipal Council. He added this technology will help to create a safer environment for the community in the prevention of crime and vandalism, traffic control, flood warning and improving the security of properties in the area. All the information received through the Smart City CCTV will be distributed to the Sarawak Integrated Operating Centre before distributing to the authorities involved. Uh, just now you see the Sarawak Integrated Operation Centre. That means that all this information will go to one place. And from there, it go to different agency, be it the local government, be it the police, be it so on. You know? um, Meanwhile, the public at large gladly welcome this approach. Thank you. Right. The government continues to be committed to implement various development programs following the provision provided. On Thursday, Batang Lupar Parliamentary Member Datuk Suri Rohani Abdul Karim submitted a fund total to 419,000 ringgit under the allocation for the Minor Rural Project MPR Fund. <laughs> The delivery of the grant is for drainage repair, road upgrade, kindergarten repair, building of jetty, roof repair and financing of the building of Astaka and school courts. Meanwhile, residents from Kampong Mumbai were grateful because the construction of the freshwater fisheries jetty would make it easier for fishermen to operate with a grant totaled up to 25,000 ringgit. Ini lama mula sebab kini tu dia orang susah mau ambil udang, nangkap udang pun susah sebab jalan jetty si ada. Bagi jalan si tahu madah lah sebab jalan lumpo pasai sebab pasai kelalu gila. Through that ceremony, the people continued to follow the standard operating procedures provided especially when the recovery movement control orders are still being enforced. He also adds that the implementation of the SOP is for the safety and good of one another. 
The government will announce the date of payment for the second phase of Bantuan Prihati National BPN 2.0 very soon. According to Finance Minister Tengku Dato Sri Zafrul Abdul Aziz, the application and appeal process is still underway. The government will announce the date of payment of the second phase of Bantuan Prihati National or BPN 2.0 soon. Finance Minister Tengku Datuk Seri Zafrul Abdul Aziz said it would be also announced in the near future the new applications and approved appeals. These are expected to be channeled starting this month. Meanwhile, the reviewing of new applications on the Prihatin Special Grant 2.0 is in the process of cross-checking between the Indian Revenue Board of Malaysia and the local authority. The results will be announced in the near future. Welcome back. Sarawak State Disaster Management Committee released the date, time and location of places of co confirmed COVID-19 cases. According to the Minister of Local Government and Housing Sarawak, Datuk Sri Dr. Sim Kui Hien, this step was taken to show the seriousness of the state government in curbing the spread of the virus. As uh, SDMC has promised, uh, Sarawak will be different from the rest of Malaysia uh, because uh, we are using our own Sarawak public public health protection ordinance to review the location, uh, the time and the date of the uh, potential uh, positive cases. And this, we do this because we want to be, uh, we see the results of Sabah and West Malaysia and we hope that by this measure we can help Sarawak to be different trajectory so that we can be different from uh, going on the same path as In addition, SDMC will continue to update the details with the latest information from various sources, including applications such as the MySejahtera app and Community app. However, Dr. Sim reminds the public to not to stigmatize on the premises listed. Right. All teachers from Peninsular Malaysia, Sabah and Labuan must undergo mandatory quarantine at designated quarantine centres upon entering Sarawak on Thursday. According to the State Disaster Management Chairman Douglas Uga Umbas, the teachers must also undergo swab tests on the second and eighth days of their quarantine before they are allowed to return to their respective schools. Speaking at a news conference regarding the COVID-19 situation, Uga said two screening tests would be conducted specifically upon their arrival and two days before the end of their quarantine period, before they would be discharged from the quarantine centres. Keputusan yang terpaksa pengurusan bencana hari ini bagi kemasukan semua guru ke Sarawak daripada Semenanjung, Sabah Lepuan, mereka akan menjalani kuarantin di pusat kuarantin yang ditetapkan selama 10 hari. Ujian RT-PCR akan diambil pada hari kedua dan hari ke-8 dan dibenarkan discharge pada hari ke-10 setelah keputusan ujian negatif. Mereka akan menyambung 4 hari bagi kuarantin di rumah. Manakala bagi guru yang melapor diri di kawasan pendalaman, mereka akan menjalani kuarantin wajib 14 hari di pusat kuarantin. Meanwhile, he said there is one more new cluster detected today, which is the Karanji Tabuan cluster, bringing the total number of cases to 1,180. All airlines must only sell flight tickets according to the flight schedule approved by the State Disaster Management Committee. For the overall flight schedule, each airline is given a different flight timing in order to assist them to have a better passenger load for their flight. Airline flights frequency from Kuala Lumpur, Kota Kinabalu and Labuan to Cebu and Miri will be reduced from January 9 until further notice. Sarawak Minister of Transport Dato Lee Kim Shin said the decision was based on the request for flight reduction received from the Cebu and Miri Division Disaster Management Committees. This is taking into consideration the limited number of hotel rooms available for quarantine purposes and the rising number of COVID-19 cases in Peninsular Malaysia and Sabah. Therefore, the public is advised to book or purchase flight tickets based on this SDMC latest approved flight schedule. Lee also reminded that all airlines not to cancel any flight last minute that had been approved by SDMC to avoid the unnecessary problem to the public. 
The General Operations Force, GOF, has successfully foiled an attempt of smuggling illicit cigarettes and alcohol worth nearly 3 million ringgit. GOF Commander Senior Assistant Commissioner Mancha Atta said the success derived from an operation in two locations, namely Jalan Kuching Serian and Miri Bintulu. Mancha said 5,000 cartons of illicit white cigarettes and 1,610 boxes of alcoholic drinks, including 87 boxes of alcoholic beverages, were found in the garage located at 13th Mile in Jalan Kuching, Surian. Three lorries were confiscated and five local males were caught to aid the investigation. All seizures were then sent to Padawan District Police Headquarters, or IPD, for further investigation. Meanwhile, the case in Miri, the battalion discovered various types of credit cigarettes that is worth estimating 1.7 million ringgit. Both cases were investigated under Section 135, Bracket 1, Bracket D, Custom Acts 1967. And that concludes our 5 p.m. English news on TVS. Stay tuned for our Nightline at 11.30 p.m. with Cheryl Shamina. My name is Andy Gui. Have a pleasant day.